Welcome to r slash Entitled People, where we share stories from your lives about people who think the rules don't apply to them, and they should get what they want. Thank you friends for subscribing to the channel, and for so many likes. And today we have three great stories, so subscribe, hit the like button, and let's begin. The first story, tales about daily struggles with demanding customers. The second story, staring games with an entitled guest. A strange encounter at the hotel front desk. The third story, put on the spot after a promotion. The first story is, Little Shop of Entitlement Usually it seems like the cases of entitled people are limited to one-off occurrences. Stories from people in which they describe an incident or two of coming into contact with the rare entity known as an entitled person. But I'll tell you now that when working in retail this is almost a daily occurrence. Some time ago I was working for a small wine and spirit merchant in a fairly small town. The residents were mainly middle to upper middle class, but many thought of themselves as upper class and therefore entitled to more than the average customer. This would usually be in the form of asking for discount. Whether it's one bottle or ten, the words, so what discount are you going to give me, or what price are you going to sell me this for will forever grate in my mind. Most of the time it would be for a case, twelve bottles, of cheap plonk, and in this instance we'd usually take a bit off the top to make it seem like we're doing them a favor. If they were a part of the company, society, etc. that we do trade with, We'd take off as much as we could, depending on the profit margin of said product, or up to as much discount as they were allowed per agreement. Usually such customers would be happy to get a discount, but every now and then some would get pushy and demand their full discount, on items we could not sell at such a price without making a loss. On one particular occasion, a customer who is a member of multiple societies thought they could stack their discounts and demanded I give them a 120% discount. At other times we would get the occasional customer who wanted an expensive bottle of champagne, whiskey or fine wine, but did not want to pay the price. When working in retail or customer service you're always taught to never say no. Rather using the terms like unfortunately, I'm sorry but, and using a technique that I like to call the SH sandwich, good news, bad news, good news, we would usually use this to upsell customers, and it worked pretty well if someone wanted a discount. For example, one, a customer wants 10 bottles of wine. Two, they ask for a discount. Three, I would reply, let me have a look and see what I can do for you. Good news. Four, I would check the system and see that the margin is good and it's possible to give a discount. However, I would also see that the wine is not currently on offer. So I would say, unfortunately, the product is currently not on offer. Bad news. Five, then I would try to upsell them. In this case, I would say, however, if you add another two bottles and take a full case, I would be happy to give you a small discount this one time. Good news. We made sure to always include this one time or as a one-off because we had customers who would come back thinking they're forever entitled to a discount just because we gave them one on their last order. Some would persistently try it, even if we told them and reiterated that it was only once. It even went as far as threatening to ban a couple of customers if they refused to stop asking after being denied on multiple occasions. Other problems with discounts arose due to poor communication with the retail chain that we were part of. Sometimes they would advertise offers but forget to inform us. One instance of this left me shaking with anxiety and anger, after a particularly nasty customer who always demanded discounts and was denied, finally got his chance at revenge. After screaming at me to check the online store, it was determined that the offer was legit, but no one thought that informing us was important. Upon seeing that he was right, he proceeded to get up close to my face and smugly demand that I apologize to him. Even after all of our techniques and ways of saying no, without actually saying no, there'd always be a customer or two who would use a different tactic we would not be prepared for. For example, we had one customer who would buy a lot of wine once or twice a year. His tactic would be to come into the store five minutes before closing time and then proceed to taste everything on the tasting table. He would then try to taste wines that weren't, saying things like, if you open that wine, I'll buy a case, only to then do a 180 and go back on his word, because he didn't like the taste. An hour after closing time and after he picked what he wanted, he would negotiate the price. The thing is, he was never rude or demanding, and always spent a good few thousand. As a small shop, we needed the sales and coupled with the growing irritation of having to stay after closing, meant that we had to oblige him most of the time. Some customers would also take advantage of trying every single wine before leaving or buying one bottle of something cheap. 
whilst others would try to get a free gift box or free delivery. One B-movie celebrity had a habit of calling just before closing and getting wine to be delivered that same evening for free. This would usually involve me hauling a case of wine about three kilometers to their house. One day I had had enough and refused outright, but that only made us lose a customer. The other incidents involving entitled people during my time there did not happen in the shop directly or during a transaction, but rather outside. Our shop had a small customer plus staff car park, five to six spaces at most, down a small road adjacent to our shop. The road was a bit of a gray area and no one was quite sure whether it belonged to the council or to the business park it led to. Due to this, ticket inspectors would not patrol this road, and every resident thought they were entitled to free parking there. However, our little car park was private land and owned by the retail chain. Unfortunately, quite a few people, including the shop across the road that only had one parking space for customers and staff or the taxi service with its own parking 50 meters down the road, did not get the memo or see the multiple signs stating, private property. Customer parking only. Repeat offenders will be towed. Of course, we never got anyone towed, but we would leave a note on the car and if that got no response, then we would call the ticket inspectors, who would come and give them a fine. We tried to be as lenient as possible and would accept people using our car park after closing time, as long as the car was gone before we opened the next day. Similarly, we would make exceptions to those that asked for permission, had a good reason and were being sincere in the amount of time they would need. However, this did not stop those entitlement-inclined individuals from exerting their right to supposed round-the-clock free parking. Some would get angry, shout, and rip up their fine in a rage. Some would claim that they were only there for five minutes when their car has been sitting there for two days. Others would argue that we have no right to issue parking tickets, that they didn't see the signs or that the car park is not our property. A select few would feign friendliness or politeness, pretend to be a regular customer, or try to bribe us by offering to buy a bottle of wine if we let them use the car park. There were, of course, a few diehards that outright refused to acknowledge that they were not allowed to park there whenever they pleased, and were constant repeat offenders. I must confess it did give me a certain level of satisfaction seeing them get fined, and watching them try to squirm their way out of it. Mainly because for once I did not have to put on my customer service face. I could tell them no and there was not a D thing they could do about that. We'd given them plenty of warnings and once the fine was issued it was no longer our problem, and they would have to take it up with the council. If you made it this far, thank you for taking the time to read my story. I apologize for the length, but it's the shortest that I could make it. There are too many incidents to count, and it would take forever to explain each one in detail. The second story is... Guy just stares at me like it's somehow going to get him what he wants. So this guy makes a reservation. He books a cheap room. Not the cheapest, but still quite the difference. All is good until a couple of days later when he arrives. Hi, I have a reservation under blah blah. And if you could give me that X room, most expensive room. I inform him that he booked Y room. He starts how he's our loyal customer, blah, blah, regular SH. I've never seen him before. He then starts complaining about everything and acting really strange, like extremely odd. He would just stop talking and look at me. I thought he was going to say more, but nope, he just stared at me. I then just repeated, sir, you've booked the Y room, but for the difference of dollar dollar, you can get that room. He just looks at me. Now I'm used to getting stupid stares from people, but this guy was not drunk or high. He just stared at me. I stared back at him. There's silence. I try to be nice and just calmly repeat it again. He then finally says that it's too much and he's going to keep the original room. Go forward two months. I see the reservation for the same name, this time over bking.com. And now he books the cheapest possible room we have, but it's the beginning of summer so the prices are double what they were. He shows up at 9 a.m. and before I can even say hello, Hi, well today I booked your best room. I'm thinking to myself, WTF, you booked the cheapest darn room we have. Much worse than what you did the first time. Anyways, I first inform him there are no rooms available yet, as we were the full day before the current guests are still eating breakfast, that he needs to come back later. He just smirks and give me his stupid stare again. I ask him to come back later and the room will be ready for him at XXX hour. I also inform him that he's not actually booked our best room, but the cheapest room. He just stares at me like I'm stupid again. I inform him again of what he booked and that unfortunately we have no other rooms available, aka we're full. He keeps staring at me and smirks again. This time I just decide enough. I just stare back at him. I just didn't care. He was obviously a bad guest in my book and I really don't care anymore for his weird staring trick. He just kept staring at me. I wait for him to say something, it's his turn. He doesn't flip out or start yelling. He just says how unprofessional I am and what I have against him. I let him know I have nothing against him, 
Although I do, because his staring is just effing weird, and obvious that he's trying to put me in a strange position. He continues with, Well, what are we going to do now? I booked your best room. I tell him the facts again. He just stares and stares and stares. And then he flips out. What do you have against me? You really don't want me as your guest, right? I totally calm disagree with him and tell him he just made a mistake, and I would be happy to cancel his reservation for free. Please just leave, I think to myself, and stop with the staring. He stares. I think to myself, F it, I'm just going to go do something else. He starts yelling at me how unprofessional we are, and that we're going to get what we deserve and he's going to write it. At this point I'm just like, sir, you can get a free cancellation, and I can help you to get it on bking.com. He insists that it's not possible, and shows me how he's paid already for the best room. I try to show him what he booked. He keeps moving the phone away, just showing me that he is paid. I finally get to show him. And now here you see, request free cancellation, and he quickly moves his phone away, like I was trying to click it. This goes back and forth for a while when he finally gives up and cancels his reservation. He leaves telling me how we're going to get what we deserve. Thank you, and please don't come back. Completely destroyed my morning and rest of the day. Not to mention I'm alone today and have somewhere around 80 checkouts and am totally unprepared and already exhausted. I googled him later and saw he's a public speaker, has some strange wannabe TED talks and his weird 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 videos and portfolio. I'm thinking to myself now, dude, your strategies might work on some people, but staring like that is just effing weird, and puts people in uncomfortable situations where they just start talking I guess. Which I guess was your intention with me, but I have a job here and I'm used to BS and just staring at me won't change the facts. Did you expect me to pay for your room out of my pocket or something? GTFO and stop being a creep. Edit. Coworker informs me later that he actually did stay with us before, that she remembers him. Must have been a long time though since he's not in the system anymore, but that he's gotten really strange. He used to be really nice. Now he's just really creepy and rude. The third story is One Effing Penny as a Promotion I was working at a Union grocery store in 2002-ish as a bagger. 30 bucks a month for Union dues, minimum wage to start. Six months in they renegotiate the Union contract and say our Union rep really went to bat for us and once we finished our first year, we would be getting a sizable raise. They had me coming in at 5 a.m. outside Union regulations to pressure wash the bakery and meat department rubber floor mats. They had me staying late to do inventory, but I again against Union rules. Basically working three of us baggers into the ground. First year completed. First check under that new raise, a penny a GD hour, one cent, 40 cents a week. I took my check into the GM, who I had a good working relationship with, asked him if there was a mistake. He looked at the check and said, your hours look fine. You're full time, what's the problem? Uh, that raise you bragged about us getting, that the union rep really took you to town over is a penny an hour? Are you serious? GM looks uncomfortable. That's, uh, that is, well, it gets better the longer you're in the union. You're off to a good start. I'm done. I'm out. Let's talk about this. I don't want to lose you. You're a great worker. Hold on, let's figure this out. Can you bump that raise up a few bucks an hour starting last week while untying my apron and taking off my name tag? Uh, the union contract states, I dropped my stuff on his floor, turned and walked away before he could finish. Best feeling ever. No two weeks, no response from follow-up HR phone calls, and laughing in his face when he asked me to come back every time I shopped there. Literally the lowest possible raise they could have given. Fully insulting. A few years later, the granddad who owned the company croaked, the family fractured, and whole chain went belly up shortly thereafter. Hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. See you in the next video.